this series, I'll be showing you how to groom your small dog at home. If you'd like to know more about how to blow dry your dog like a pro, then make sure to keep on watching. Hey everyone, it's Tara with Zen Dog, where I coach you on how to help your dog have stress-free grooming at home or the salon. I'm a certified dog trainer, a certified dog groomer, and a certified fear-free professional. On this channel, I'll be sharing everything that I know about dog training, dog grooming, and all of it in between. Hi everybody, thank you for watching our drying video today. We are grooming a small long-haired dog at home and using a dryer. If you want to dry your dog like a pro, this is the video for you. So I do not use a towel to rough my dog up. I don't rough their hair with the towel. I just use it to gently pat it dry. You don't want to use the towel to rough up the coat because you're going to make that hair break off. You're going to make it brittle. You're going to damage it and you're going to cause matting. Luna's getting a spray of some coat conditioner. It's also going to increase um, or decrease the drying time so it helps it dry faster. The real secret to drying your dog at home is to go in sections and hold the nozzle far away. Especially if the, do uh, the hair is long on your dog, you want to hold the nozzle pretty far away, like a foot, foot to a foot and a half off the dog. Because the blow dryer is going to help straighten the hair and it's going to help make it look really nice and tidy. Make sure you blow dry one section at a time before going on to the next section. That is really important. I don't move from the back to the legs to the chest to the belly. I don't move around until each section is dry. Using the long nozzle, I hold it kind of parallel to the back because I really want to make sure, for me personally, I want to make sure that I'm blow drying the hair so that it lays a certain way. I try not to blow dry the hair backwards because I don't want the hair to lay the wrong direction. I want it to lay down and drop below from her back. So here you can see me letting Luna turn around, letting Luna kind of move the way she feels comfortable. I'm not holding her, I'm not forcing her to stay in a position, but I am offering some um, support with my other hand. My other hand does a lot of different things when I'm blow drying and I also want to point out that you should be switching hands. It is going to be hard on your shoulder and hard on your wrist if you use the same hand for the entire process. So switch hands and your other hand should be near the dog. It should offer some comfort just to kind of also tell whether or not your dog is about to move or whether they feel like they need to move. Your free hand is going to know. Your free hand can also hold a paw or hold the coat to feel if it's still wet because believe it or not hair may look dry and not actually be dry you will be able to tell with your free hand my free hand is also gauging the temperature because like I said I use the high heat setting when I'm drying her body it goes by faster and I'm holding it far enough away but my free hand needs to always assess that temperature when drying the tail be very careful about creating accidental mats. I'm holding the dryer really far away. You don't want to see the hair whipping around. You just want to see it being pushed away. And now I'm blow drying near her head. When you're blow drying near the head, it is really recommended that you take the nozzle off. I also turned the heat setting down to low. Drying around the face, the head, the ears, this is all really scary for some dogs. So removing that nozzle helps make it a little nicer of a process for them. It's not as strong, it's not as loud. For Luna, if I use a brush near this space, near her head and her, her neck, she'll lay down and let me brush the hair as I dry it. But again, if your dog feels the need to turn around and readjust and make space, let them do that. Don't make this an unpleasant experience. The truth is that Luna doesn't love blow drying, but I do a lot of work to help this process for her. You don't see me feeding too many treats in this video because it would just take very long. Actually, you can see on the table, I do have a, um, a piece of jerky that I was giving her during this process, but she gets lots of treats during blow drying. And I wanna point out that 
this is very time consuming if you want to be a home bather, which I highly recommend. I really want to empower all of my clients who have small dogs or any size dog. I want to empower them to feel capable of washing and drying their own dog at home. This will greatly assist your groomer in between appointments, in between their haircuts. It'll keep them from getting mats. Again, like I said, brushing should be the last step of, of having mats. The bath and the blow dryer is the most helpful things for dog mats. So Luna lays on a pillow. This really helps stabilize her head and it keeps her from tucking her nose away because she would really prefer to, to hide in a, in a hole and avoid this blow dryer. But I do my best to make it a positive experience and I give treats when I'm doing this. You can see some mats behind her ears. Those will need to be brushed and that will be our next video. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for that next video. I'm also using this hairbrush, but I'm not doing it so that I can brush out her, her knots and her mats. I'm not trying to brush those out. I'm just using the, the gentle fingers of this brush um, to move the hair, to kind of massage it around and just open it up. I just want to get to the root where it's still a little wet because if you remember in the beginning, we don't towel dry the head. We want to keep the head wet so that when we get to blow dry it, it will be as consistent as possible. If we let the hair around the face and the head air dry too much, it would look different than the body. It would look crunchy and crinkly, so my favorite thing to do is just leave the head wet, more wet than the body, and blow dry the head last and make it all look as nice as possible. If your dog is scared of the blow dryer near their head, don't expect them to sit through this. I would highly recommend that you just let them fan dry in a kennel. Put them in a wire kennel and put a box fan on the front and you can put a box fan laying on the top. That is not going to hurt them. It's not heated. It's just air. And that'll allow you to get half of them dry um, while you're still training them to like the blow dryer. The third video in this series is going to cover how to brush your dog. If you would like to know all the tips and tricks on how to brush your dog at home, then make sure to watch the next video. Check the description box below for all the links to things that I used in the video and also some free resources. There you'll find a free video guide on how to have stress-free nail trim. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to snag that free guide. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.